So oftentimes when you're uh, beginning to work in touch, you, uh, you hear a lot about scripts and I got to run a script or you can do this with a script and stuff like that. And, and you wonder what is a script in touch and, and how does it work and how do I run it and where do I write it? And in fact, it's really simple. Um, it's deceivingly simple and it's basically uh, a script is essentially something that you write inside of a, um, a text uh, environment. So in, this, in the case of touch, you write text inside of dats. And a script is typically um, just uh, accomplishing some actions on um, a input or an output or an operator. And um, I'm going to show you a very simple example of something that you would probably never do in touch because it would be a very sort of non-interactive way of working. But if I were to simply type, as we've seen in the previous recordings, if you've watched them, um, this syntax that tells me that I want to affect, let's say, the radius of the circle. I just confirm the name rad x for the um, x radius. So I go here and I type rad x and then I just say equals to the number that I want. And now if I were to right click on this stat and I were just to choose run scripts, it will change the value here. Now there are a um, couple of things to say. The first one is that, once again, you would probably never want to do this because you don't want to be right-clicking on a dat every time you wanted to run, to run your script. The other thing that's interesting is that compared to what we did before, this value has changed, but it is not hard-coded. In other words, I could go back and change it to 1, and, and I could run my script again, and then I could change it would change it to 3, and then I could run it back to 2, etc etc what that means is that scripts are a really efficient way of doing things sometimes when you want these values to not be a hundred percent tied to something else but just be changed once um, based on a given action and uh, touch has basically put together or the designers of touch have put together a series of ways for you to run scripts that are let's say um, more efficient and oriented towards the way touch works and those are in the family of the executes um, <coughs> wherever you see for example a dat execute um, you will also see a uh, sorry they'll all be in the dat family a chop executes a dat executes um, or just an op executes uh, these are basically the ones that you're interested in when you want a something that happens in an operator to trigger something that to trigger your script. So let's say this is a very common example. Let's say that I had a button, and um, this button is essentially going on and off. And if you wanted to see the change of values, you typically would just put down a null after the button. And if you start pressing this, you can see, oh, it's going on, it's going off, it's going on, it's going off. Um, so, and this is a button that is set to be a toggle down, which means that if I click on it once, it will stay in that value. If I were to change it, to, for example, to momentary, I click on it and it will just sort of pulse. So, um, if I leave it at the default of toggle down, and then I select this null chop and then I right click here which is how I would normally add an operator to it but if I go to dat it'll show me the only um, only um, dats that can be um, avail that can be made available to come after a chop and typically what I want is a chop executes and you can see that no connection has been made between the two but what the connection that has been made is that this chop execute is essentially going to run a script based on something that happens within this null. So if I look here, the connection that has been made is that in this dat, in this chop executes, um, I can see that in the field that says chop, it is pointing towards null one, which means that it is actually looking at this chop and saying, okay, when something happens here, trigger something that I'm going to write in the script over here. Um, these are extremely important and whenever you put down a chop execute and it doesn't work, the first thing you want to look at is this. 
Um, a quick thing of note is that whenever you're working with scripts, it's pretty important to split your workspace and have a text port view available. And the reason for that is that often when you're writing a script and there's a problem, you won't see a message appear anywhere in the touch interface aside from in the text board in that um, area. And another quick tip is that if you're ever trying to find the path of an operator, because you're trying to write a script to modify something that's maybe in a different container or in a different part of your network, you can just drag and drop it onto the text port and it will show you the exact path to this operator. So this can be handy sometimes when you're just trying to know where something is. So back to scripts um, very quickly. Um, you can see that this script here is already has a bunch of stuff written in it. And all this stuff is is correspondences to these switches. So for example, off to on means that this script will trigger when, if you turn this on, it will trigger whenever this button goes from 0 to 1. That's when the scripts will trigger. And cor in the correlation to that, you will have to write whatever code you want to write inside of this first block that is called off to on. And we can explain this in a, in a different class, but essentially these are functions that have been created for this purpose in Python. So if I were to do exactly what I did earlier and type circle one dot par dot um, rad x equals to three and I have my off to on activated and I turn this back to one, let's say, and I click my button, you will see that it does exactly the same thing. Now if I set this back to one and I go back to my chop execute and I turn this off and I click, I can click as much as I want, it won't do anything. And you can have more than one on. So if I have my on to off and then inside of my on to off I say same thing op circle one dot par dot rad x and I set it back to one then whenever I click on my button I will be going from three to one. So this is really useful and um, in further recordings we'll uh, look at different ways of using this and um, uh, a quick maybe explanation here is essentially the off to on and the on to off are the most usually um, used. Um, the other ones are less used because they will be constantly looking for something. So for example if you look at um, if you have value change on, it means that every time something um, is changed in your channel, like for example, if you, if you were looking for any modification of a channel, then it would trigger your script if you were to write your code inside of value change. So um, we can explore this further in different recording, but um, as of now, this will give you a rough idea of how you write scripts, where you write them, and, um, and, and just some quick overview of what you can do with them.